term education, what does it mean to me? It means um, learning, really, um, you know, educating the younger generation, the ability to learn, teaching people how to learn. That's how I would sum up what education means to me. Did I enjoy school and what did I like most about it? I loved every element of school. Um, I look back now and think about how lucky I was. I was born uh, and bred in Devon in Torbay, right by the seaside. And whether it was my first school, Rosen's Primary, or when it was uh, Colston's, the sixth form, where I got to experience um, private school and then in between Paynton College, where I discovered um, you know, all of my friends. So yeah, I would say that school for me is probably one of the, the highlights of my life so far. Well, my first memories of PE in school were um, Rosen's Primary School um, in Paynton. We had um, uh, purple um, shorts and a light blue top. And I remember the first time you got given your uh, new socks with stripes on. It must be why I'm an Aston Villa fan because they were very similar to those colours. But I remember having my first sort of kit and then being allowed to run around outside. Um, and as you can imagine, I had a lot of pent up energy. So it was lovely to, to run a bit of steam on. Oh, this is a really good one. How was rugby introduced to me? Well, rugby um, wasn't actually played at my school, it was a football uh, school, um, so I was uh, with some older generational friends, so mum and dad were, had lots of friends in the area and we used to go for barbecues um, and we were up at their house in Torquay and there were some older kids um, that were chucking a rugby ball around and they were teaching me how to pass, spin pass, and that night uh, I managed to spin pass and they said, oh you should come and play rugby, you should try it, you'd be good, and so under 10s I think I was eight years old. My dad drove me all the way from uh, Paynton, where we were living at the time, to Torquay, even though Paynton had a rugby club. But I wanted to go to this one where the older boys were. And that was the start of rugby for me. Eight years old in Torbay. Oh, I was very lucky um, to have lots of teachers and coaches that inspired me. Um, I think the first coach uh, school teacher coach that I had um, was uh, a guy called Ian Vinter um, who was amazing um, he was really really good started my love of rugby Paul Warwick was very inspirational to me um, had a bit of Irishman in him very tough uh, and a really good coach uh, and then later on I was very lucky to be coached by probably one of the best sort of spotters of talent uh, Alan Martinovic and later than that, uh, Andy Robinson as well, the uh, England and Scottish, although we won't mention that one, the England rugby coach. Crikey, at what stage did I realise I could make a career out of rugby? I suppose it was in the sixth form. Uh, my passion was um, to fly planes. Uh, I always wanted to, to be a pilot. I knew I probably wasn't bright enough. Um, but I wanted to fly planes in the Air Force. So the idea was rugby was amateur at the time. And I thought if I could stay in education as long as possible, because that was the route um, pre-1997. Pre um, so I went to Colston's on a sports scholarship um, with the idea that I'd eventually sort of apply and try to become an officer in the Air Force. And in my second year of sixth form, uh, rugby went professional. And I remember... Um, Andy Robinson, our teacher at the time, sort of he'd left to become a professional coach and player. And he came back to the school and he said, you can either um, get shot at in the military or you can chase an egg around the pitch uh, with your mates. And so uh, I think I chose right at the time, but I, I, I'm not sure now with the state of my body. Oh. Pinnacle of my sporting career. This is a really hard one because Every time you think you've reached it, there's something else comes up. So for me, you know, my first ever professional contract was amazing. Then I wanted to play for the first team and, and that took quite a few years. So I strive for that. Then you play a few games for Bath and it's amazing and you get the opportunity to represent your country. Then a World Cup and then the Lions. So um, I think any time my club was like my family. So playing for Bath for me was 
was probably the yeah the biggest pinnacle but then you've got England and the British and Irish Lions so they all mean a lot and they have different reasons in my uh, in my heart What was it like having to retire from the sport early? It was a bit of a shock. Um, I don't think you ever prepare. You're so singular focused as, a, as an athlete. Um, and I, I think trying to sort of think about the end, you know, you worry that it's a bit of a sign of weakness. Um, I, I was very lucky, again, with a great support network. I received some coaching to help me in my transition. It came earlier than I thought, so I did have to deal with that kind of stuff. But without the people around me, um, I don't think I'd be where I am today. So I'm very thankful. Um, and, I, and I think the more young athletes can prepare, the better it is. Um, oh, crikey. How did I keep myself motivated after my rugby career finished? I think the beauty of being an athlete is you're quite selfish and it's brilliant. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. I was allowed to have naps whenever I wanted to, massages. It's all about getting ready for the weekend and being the best you can be. And then uh, all of a sudden you go into what I call the real world and uh, you start to realise that you've got a wife and kids and other people to look after. So I think my motivation switched to how can I sort of support uh, my family and uh, and everybody else around me, all the people that supported me, um, you know, to be that sort of selfish, dri driven athlete. Does it have a huge impact on your mental health and how did I stay positive? I think it does, definitely, because you're so driven um, when you're an athlete and um, the good bit of being an athlete is you are very, you are able to look after yourself. And I use a bit of an analogy now when I'm coaching in the, in, the, in the business world, that you need to put your own mask on before you can help others. And for me, that means that you have to get the stuff, for, you know, your own mental health takes priority. So for me, that is still doing exercise, making sure I'm doing some mindfulness, um, you know, so that I can perform at the best of my ability in the workplace, whether that's a, a dad in my family, whether that's a, an exec coach in the business world, or whether that's just as a mate. But I think if you look after your own mental health, it's a lot easier to then start to work with other people. So how did I stay positive? I made sure that I live in the now and, uh, and I don't worry too much about the past because I can't do anything about that. And quite frankly, I can't really control what's going on in the future. So I'm a very much a live in the now and enjoy the moment. Do I think that mental health is spoken about enough in school? I definitely don't think it is. I think it's an area that we're only really starting to explore as adults uh, and understanding our own mental health and how we can affect it. So I think it's an area of growth that I think in the future schools will have to really tackle. There are some schools that are, are definitely doing it. Um, but again, it's when adults uh, struggle with their own mental health and know how to, to deal with it, it's very difficult for us to help children. So I think more can be done. What advice would I give to a teacher to promote rugby in a school? I think rugby for me is the ultimate team game. You have diversity across the board, all shapes and sizes, tall ones, short ones, fast ones, slow ones. Um, obviously I tick quite a few of those boxes, short, fat and slow. Um, but I think you appreciate everybody's skill set. And for me, that's a life lesson. Um, understanding people's strengths and weaknesses and what they can add to the team, how to cover for them. Um, so I think any child that plays um, rugby, um, will benefit in life because it's a definite life skill. If I could be a professional athlete in any other sport, what would I choose and why? Oh, crikey, there's so many. Um, I love testing myself. Um, I love the way um, mixed martial arts, I don't like being punched in the face. Um, as you can tell with rugby, I tried to stay away from that a bit. I got a few, um, so I was beating with the ugly stick. But uh, I think MMA for me is uh, like chess and it's physical, so there's lots of moves. So I think if I could be a professional in another sport, it would be MMA. 
But I also used to um, obviously love football. And the bit that I, uh, I think sticks with me from football is how you can be in the tunnel and smiling to the person next to you and just saying, oh, I'll see you out on the field. Whereas in rugby, that wasn't the case. You were looking across going, am I going to beat you up or are you going to beat me up today? <laughs> so uh, I always envied footballers for that reason. What advice would I give to a 10 year old rugby player starting out? Um, I would say that there are, when you're trying to be a professional, there are more knockbacks and you have to develop your resilience. Don't ever accept uh, somebody not picking you or not telling you you're not good enough because that will happen and that will be their preference not to pick you, but just keep going, believe in yourself and continually grow because the game changes, people change. Um, and you'll make it, but you just have to have that singular focus. Quick fire round, favorite film, I would say Usual Suspects. Biggest fear, oh crikey, um, letting people down. Favourite sports team, I would say, although I was lucky to play in it, the British and Irish Lions, just because of the travel and the supporters. Childhood hero, um, I want to say uh, Michael Jordan, um, everything that I'm not. so difficult experience is lions but representing your country means everything i'm gonna have to go with england oh, without a shadow of a doubt sing uh, signature dish beef wellington Ooh, celebrity i'd most like to have dinner with I've met him once or twice before, and because he's an absolute dude, I'm going to say Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Crikey, it's a children's show, so I can't say Invisible Man. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll be, uh, is it Stretch? Is, who's the guy that can stretch everywhere? You can't tell that I've got height as issue. choose to be stuck in a lift with someone who smells nice um so uh right who shall i say natalie portman oh my goodness now this is a tough one um i would have said during my rugby career beach all the way the maldives for me was fantastic uh, i love the water and being you know uh, born by the sea but since I finished rugby and I've been allowed, the mountains uh, have got my calling. I've been lucky enough to be uh, to climb Everest, but I realised walking is not my forte. Anywhere skiing, so I'm going to say Canada. <laughs>